We use mobile phones and devices that require internet connections almost every day of our lives and we really don't think about how they get their connection until they stop working. But what happens if the entire infrastructure goes down? Well, I'm here at AT&T's Disaster Network Recovery Drill and we're going to find out. I'm here with Kelly Morrison, who is a public information officer for AT&T, and some interesting things are going on behind us. Can you tell us exactly what this setup is? We're part of the Network Disaster Recovery Team. This is a quarterly drill. We practice with our team to make sure that we have the skills and we're familiar with the new equipment that we bring out. So we're testing what we'd do if we lost a major office. So since uh, people are relying more on their mobile devices and cell phones, is this kind of a more important drill for you guys to be doing? You know, it's, it's critical, no matter what kind of device people are using, whether it's cellular, whether it's, it's data, whether it's UVerse at home even, people want that service to always run and we always want to provide it. So we bring the service back up more quickly by mobilizing it in these trailers. Um, what do you guys do during the drill? During the drill we practice like we would during an actual response. So we deploy the equipment from the different warehouses, we arrive as a team, we assemble it all together. So at the beginning we're construction workers, by the, the second or third day we're engineers inside the trailers turning up service just like we would in a regular office. Our goal to be on site, uh, staged, ready to go within 24 hours of activation. So I've met up with Kevin Parker, and Kevin, can you tell me exactly what you do? I would be the incident commander when Network Disaster Recovery goes to the field to uh, deal with any emergencies we may have and uh, network restoration and recovery. So we're in one of those vehicles that would kind of go to a disaster, and it's called a Colt, correct? Correct sell on light truck. This Colt goes into any of our areas where we want to provide coverage, whether it may be an area that typically doesn't have cellular coverage or an area that where its coverage has been degraded. I'm in this massive truck and it looks basically like a computer and uh, I'm with the data technology planner for uh, AT&T's disaster relief network. Um, what is this exactly? Basically we have everything on here as though it's just a wild card, that it can be any office out in the network. And then as soon as a disaster is declared, we basically take, uh, let's say if it was Philadelphia, we take the ex all of the hardware configurations and uh, configurations loaded onto the routers, and we just plug things in exactly as they had been plugged in in, uh, in, in Philadelphia. All the cabling, everything would match everything uh, as it was in Philadelphia and basically what you're doing is just one for one replicating what it existed in the failed office. So to make things simple you want to bring it back exactly the way it was prior to the event. I'm with Tim Davis who works with AT&T with the disaster response team and uh, you do something very special. What is it? I'm the manager of our NDR Network Disaster Recovery Special Operations Team. We are a telecom hazmat team. Uh, pretty much, though, if you're looking at a hazmat response, you have essentially three different levels or uh, three different types of uh, response that you would do. It would either be a level A, a level B, or a level C. A level A, which is not what we have on right now, but a level A is the highest level of respiratory protection as well as the highest level of skin protection. In some cases, you'd want, for example, an asbestos ent in entry where you have really high levels of asbestos. Another example is chlorine gas where the uh, uh, levels are it are not as high. So really it's a case by case basis depending on what the uh, chemical is and what concentration of the chemical is. So this is the central nervous system of network disaster recovery. So everything that's going on is tracked in this command center. If the people out in the field require resources, require anything to be done, this is the place that they'll call to get what they need to be able to respond to the disaster. Our goal is to really make sure we can recover any significant network damaged offices, but also it's a humanitarian effort that says people need to be able to communicate during a disaster, so we deliver that as well. From hazmat suits to IP servers, there's a comprehensive system in place to deal with unforeseen events. Hopefully, we'll never have to use them. I'm Ellie Roundtree, and this has been Rockaboom Tech.